So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by my good friend and New York promoter, of course, Dimitri Salisa. Well, not just New York anymore, branching out in several areas. So how's things with you? Things are going great. We had a great event in Detroit last week. Uh, all of our fighters won. And great to see big-time boxing coming back to Detroit in a significant, consistent way. Yeah, 3-0 and on the uh, matching card, headlined by Alicia Baumgardner, uh, getting revenge over Christina Linodato. And before we talk about Jermaine Franklin, who's obviously the main man, especially with so much going on in the heavyweight division, tell us a little bit more about the two prospects you had on the bill, both uh, 7-0 and going in, uh, now 8-0, and Joseph Hick, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Joseph Hicks and uh, Mr. Pagan as well. Yeah, very excited about both of them. Both had elite amateur careers. Joshua Pagan was a national U.S. champion from Grand Rapids, Michigan, same city as Floyd Mayweather. Has had a pretty significant rise up the pro ranks for several undefeated fighters. The fight before the one on July 15th, he fought a 9 0 fighter on, on our June 3rd. There was a shield show and stopped him in a very spectacular way. He's now working with a new tra trainer. His name is Steve Chris Chambers, who's a trainer of Jake Paul, amongst others world-class guy and uh this fight he fought a durable fighter and he knocked him out in the first round so very excited about his potential he's an american guy not a lot of boxing fans know about him just yet but i believe that uh, towards the end of this year he's going to get real tv exposure and it's going to make a lot of noise in the junior welterweight division joseph hicks had a successful amateur career as well was the u.s olympic team captain and uh won the nationals and several significant Amateur titles, also from uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Talented guy in the fight before this one. He fought Antonio Todd, who is a real trial horse, beat a lot of good World Raider fighters. And Joe, again, was only 6 0, so big test for him. And he passed it with flying colors and uh, did well on July 15th as well. So, very happy about their progress and their potential. And, uh, you know, big time boxing. A lot of it happens in the United States, and there's a lot of international fighters, and it's great. But it's good to see homegrown talent uh, aspire and and uh, climb up the ranks as well. So uh, very excited about both of these guys. There's one other guy from Detroit that I'm very excited about who has not fought on the show, but he fought on June 3rd. His name is Deval Smith. He's from the Crown Boxing Gym. Many in the city say he's the next time he earns. He's really good, uh, very young, and very excited about him. And, and uh, you'll be seeing him in the near future as well. Yeah, I think we've had an interview with him up on the channel, actually. He seems like a really cool guy, right attitude and everything. So, And I should apologise for mispronouncing uh, Joshua Pagan's name as Pagan. It's just how we're, I guess, used to saying it over here in the UK. So apologies for that. Um, all these fighters from Detroit signing with you, the fact that you've achieved so much success with Clarissa Shields in that area, has that really allowed the, the business to open up, if you like, and create another hotbed there? I believe so. You know, Detroit has such a rich history of boxing. State of Michigan has so many great fighters. Mm -hmm. Floyd Mayweather, Tommy Hearns, Crown Boxing Gym, Chris Bird, Clarissa Shields, Anthony Durrell, Andre Durrell. I mean, the list just goes on. Hill McKenty, Emmanuel Stewart, yeah. Jonathan Banks, Sugar Hill Stewart. I mean, there's just so much talent here. Tony Harrison, Cornelius Bundridge. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And uh, lots of... Uh, talent here lots of very good trainers um you know when Emmanuel passed away it kind of it, it uh, the centralized centralization of boxing in Detroit became a little bit more challenging but it, but now it's coming back together over the last couple of years and there's so much talent here it's one of the few cities in the United States that has all the major league teams football uh soccer football basketball hockey baseball so it, it's it's a city where People are conditioned and, and are sports fans. And they reminisce of the good old days when Crown Boxing Gym was on top and time here as the world champion. So to see a new a new breed of, of talent come up is really incredible. And everybody in the city is very excited. You know, in our uh, June 3rd event, we had more than 10,000 people in the building. So, uh, you know, and Clarissa, it's, it's actually funny, right? Or interesting that... Uh, that a woman is ushering in a new age of boxing in Detroit. And Detroit is just not a vague city. It's a big, big time city uh, with lots of world-class talent and lots of world-class potential. And the future of boxing, much of the future of boxing, including guys like Jermaine Franklin, is going to be from this area. 
Michigan, Ohio, which is neighbor to each other. It's going to produce, there's so many talented young fighters. And I really believe that the future is in their hands. Now, after mixing in top class against both Dillian White and Anthony Joshua, it must have been nice for you to be able to give Jermaine a fight on the left-hand side of the bill. No gimme. I mean, he was fighting an unbeaten, hungry fighter from Mexico, but won virtually every round, or certainly on two of the judges' scorecards, won every round. What did you make of his performance? And do you think he's benefited from those two fights, albeit defeats, against White and Joshua? For sure. he's gotten. He became a better fighter. It's seldom that fighters get better after their losses. But again, the fight with Dillian White was very questionable. Most fault that he won. With Anthony Joshua, he lost the fight. He gave a good effort. And I really believe that if the fight would have happened in a, a year from then, he would have beaten him because he just didn't have the experience and the IQ to be able to understand what's going on in the ring. But you could see in this fight, which kind of happened on short notice, you could see that uh, he was able to think quicker. He was able to react better. His punches were sharper. So uh, he's definitely became a better fighter and is still becoming a better fighter and is a real threat in the heavyweight division. I mean, there's really three top heavyweights in American boxing. Deontay Wilder is number one. Then, then I would say there's Jermaine Franklin. Then there's Jared Anderson. These are the three top guys in the heavyweight division. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be, it's it's best for the sport when the best fight the best. And Jermaine has definitely shown that intent. And uh, he wants to get back in the ring with, with the top dog. So we're working on it, speaking to a couple of different people. And uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see what can work. I think Wilder's got his own plans, of course. But you mentioned Jared Anderson there. He uh, had a fight recently against Charles Martin. Well, late substitute, of course. What, what did you make of that performance? And is he someone you'd like to match Jermaine with at some point? I think Jared is very talented. And I, and I do believe that uh, although he wasn't as dominant as he usually is with Charles Martin, but again, he's young and he's going to learn and get better as a result of that fight. And he's coming back right back in August. So he's staying busy, improving his craft. I tried to sign him when he was actually still an amateur. He used to come to the Crown Boxing Gym. And I really recognized how talented he was. It's unusual that you see big guys be so athletic and so fast. Hmm. And it's ironic that the other guy that's so big and athletic is Joel Miller. And both of them have the same nickname, Big Baby. So maybe maybe they will fight one day and see what the real Big Baby is. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> Would the real Big Baby please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you consider a fight with Jared for Jermaine? Yes, I think that's a good possibility. I believe that Jared still has to get a couple of more wins and kind of climb up the ranks in an official way a little bit more because Jermaine has fought the big names and Jared is on his way, but hasn't really proven as much as Jermaine has. But I do believe that it's a big fight between top two top young American heavyweights. For sure, uh, pretty interested in that. What do you see as kind of the ideal route back to world title kind of level for Jermaine Franklin? Obviously, I understand that neither of those two fights over here were for world titles, but I think most people would consider Anthony Joshua certainly, and probably Dillian White as well as world level. How do you get Jermaine back to world level? Well, you know, we're exploring a few different possibilities. I believe that a fight with him and Deontay Wilder makes a lot of sense uh, because... He's fought all the top guys and is world class. And uh, don't know what Deontay Wilder has left after those three, after those three very difficult fights with Tyson Fury. So um, it's something that we're interested in exploring. Uh, from what I understand, one day the fight with Andy Ruiz is on, the other day it's off. So it's a very you know fluid situation. Andy Ruiz is a great fight for uh, Jermaine. Um, Joseph Parker potentially is a good fight for Jermaine. Uh, maybe you know a rematch with Dillian White uh, is is a good fight for Jermaine. So if we cannot get those fights done or something of that sort to make sense, we'll keep Jermaine busy and get him another uh, solid heavyweight name to keep progressing him in the division. Now, a rematch with Dillian White will largely depend on what happens next month in the rematch between him and Anthony Joshua. What do you make of that? Because you've obviously been close proximity for their last fights against Jermaine, both of them differing performances. One, as you said, looked quite fortunate to get the decision. The second, Joshua, I think most people felt he'd done enough to win. What do you make of those two coming back together for a rematch? You know, it's interesting and a great question. When I was at the fight, 
for the for the press conference to announce it, and I saw Anthony Joshua's body language, I could see that he was a bit unsure of himself. Mm. And then when I saw, all, obviously I've seen him in person, but now I saw some video of him and just saw the way he carried himself and the way he spoke. And I really see a lot of confidence and the way he walks and his body language is 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 is, uh, is different. He got his he got his groove back. He got his swagger back. And I believe that Anthony, with his confidence, is a very dangerous fighter. He's a very good fighter. And I would have to pick him as the favorite with uh, Dillian White. Uh, no. I do believe, I believe that, sorry, I believe that um, Derek James and being around uh, those great fighters that are also getting ready for Errol Spence uh, and Charlo, getting ready for their big fights and being in that camp and being in that environment is going to rub off positively on Anthony Joshua. I've seen some comments that Anthony has made, and I'm not going to say too much, but Anthony knows how to fight. He knows how to fight. He knows how to throw a jab. He knows how to throw a right hand in, in, in the most elite type of way. He knows boxing very well. He's beat Vladimir Klitschko, who's one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. He's beaten other really good heavyweights. Anthony Joshua knows how to fight. And, and uh, from what I've seen, again, I don't know the details, but as a fan, Robert McCracken did a great job when they were together and when they clicked. But sometimes you just don't click anymore and people change and things happen. So for Anthony Joshua, who's an elite fighter, but I believe that mentally is he, he just needs a mental change. And uh, being in camp with Derek James and with all those great fighters who are also getting ready for big fights, I believe it's going to have a tremendously positive effect on him. There was some negative feedback for AJ's performance against Jermaine. Do you think a lot of that is underselling how good Jermaine is and what he was able to do in the fight? Do you think they're criticizing Joshua rather than praising Franklin? Yes, that's for sure. I mean, look what he did against Dillian White, who is top five heavyweight in the world. And look, he just came back and he beat a 17-0 fighter in a very impressive fashion. Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, Jermaine is a world-class top heavyweight. He was a great, had a great amateur career national Golden Gloves champion uh, and beat some very good fighters in his, in his amateur ranks. Look at his pro career. He, he beat, before he was 10 no, he beat like three or four undefeated fighters. So Jermaine, you know, is, is, uh, and is still young. He's still less, you know, under 30 years old. So, uh, um, and was very hungry. So one of the things that you, you, that you have to take into consideration, Jermaine was very hungry and he has a great chin. So uh, Joshua, for Joshua, by Jermaine after coming off consecutive losses and going through through a change of trainers is really uh, very respectable because uh, Jermaine was no easy picking. And while we're talking about the heavyweight, something that's made big news over the last week or so is that Tyson Fury, the reigning WBC champion, is going to be fighting not a title defense, but against a, an MMA superstar in Francis Ngannou, albeit under boxing rules um, in October. What, what did you make of that announcement? I think it's a great thing for, for the sport of boxing. It's a great, great for sports. These are two guys in the peak of their careers who are in combat sports and is bringing fans from, from the UFC and MMA and boxing internationally together to watch this incredible event. And I only believe that it's going to increase the reach of boxing because people are going to be exposed to the story of Tyson Fury and as well as the fighters that are fighting on the undercard. So it's, it is a chance of the sports world to show itself, to show what boxing is all about, show the stories of what boxing is about. And it's happening at an exotic location in Saudi Arabia, which is also great and adds an element of interest to the fight. So I've been reading people, I've been reading some criticism on this fight, but I really strongly disagree with that. Tyson Fury, one of the greatest heavyweights of our generation, who has he not beaten in the most impressive way? I mean... You know, sometimes like we align with certain people, but you have to speak objectively uh, because boxing fans want objectivity. And objectively, this is a great fight and it's a great event for the sport of boxing. Uh, you know, when Mayweather for, for McGregor, they were both past their peak. So uh, McGregor was out of the cage for some years. Mayweather was retired. So it was a big event. It was a kind of a hybrid. And look how much attention it generated. Uh, so... These are two guys in the peak of their careers that, you know, after whatever happens, are going to go back competing at the highest level in their sport. It's never happened before. It's something of this magnitude has never happened before. And I think it's great for boxing. It's um, 
it'll help the sport grow and uh, uh, and expose again expose boxing and boxers. One of the things that I feel that uh, that um, I think is done well in the in the UK, but uh, but it's 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 it has gotten less because because there's so many choices for entertainment that the storytelling of fighters careers and their backstories is 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 lacking and storytelling is what makes stars and makes fighters who they are the ufc has done a great job in in storytelling um and has captivated their audience through that so i believe that in a boxing community as for the growth of the sport we can really benefit from telling stories in the highest way in the highest level meaning with all the cinematic uh, excellence that, that 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 it takes and uh and that'll just make the sport grow and it's what we really need great stuff now before i let you go it'd be remiss of me not to ask have there been any developments on the next move for clarissa shields we are we are working on some exciting things that again will be industry changing clarissa has set forth to change the industry and uh to, to make women's sports not just women's boxing but women's sports women's rights and empowerment grow throughout the whole world and uh we're working on something that'll be in in line with that goal all right well i know that's all i'm going to get out as, of you for now as <laughs> as, as, as don king will say only in america <laughs> fair enough dimitri really appreciate it um yeah very best like sounds like you're doing very well i don't think you need any luck but um yeah strength to strength luck is always, luck is always good a lot of people say i'll take i'll take luck over over uh, over anything so i'll i'll, I'll <laughs> I'm, I'm in that line. Thank you. <laughs> Great stuff. Cheers, Dimitri. Take care. Good okay, to see you. Thank you.